So, hey everyone, thank you for joining today at this uh, thread hunting guidelines. Today we will look um, a little bit uh, how to improve your Sigma rules development and how to gain experience in this area, uh, just looking for some specific fixes on rules logic and how to look for specific content uh, on the internet and using uh, obviously free resources uh, to improve this uh, this content. So let's start with this um, presentation. So first of all, I want to uh, talk a little about me. So I, I am Ariel Michawel. I am from Argentina, from Buenos Aires. I am 34 years old and I work as a threat hunter here in Sogprime. Uh, I am part of the content team. Uh, so I am in charge of uh, looking at all the content that you guys uh, create from the threat bounty side. So it's uh, an honor for me to do that and review all your work. Uh, and that's why we want to do this webinar to help you guys to improve your rules and gain more and more um, money or as well and experience in the area. Um, as you know, Subprime it's a platform uh, really similar to Spotify, but for bad detection rules. So it's a, it's a fun, uh, it's, it's really fun to, to say that it's like Spotify, but for uh, researchers and cybersecurity experts. Um, Obviously, I create content as well for the company and for specific clients. Uh, so my work, it's uh, maybe 50% uh, each side of these two aspects. Um, so what? Well, let's uh, move to the, to the next slide. Just one second, please. So uh, let's see a little bit on uh, the agenda for today. As I told you, it will be a, a short webinar, but I think it will be really use, useful uh, to see specific key points for develop, uh, developing uh, good Sigma rules. So the first point will be uh, related to success strategies uh, to create robust rules. Then we will talk about uh, common pitfalls in the rule submissions and how to avoid them. Uh, this is a uh, this important uh, aspect because uh, today we are uh, maybe rejecting a, a good number of rules for the same uh, issues. So we will talk about this uh, in this uh, in this item, and then we will talk about uh, IOC sigma rules versus uh, threat hunting threat hunting sigma rules. Sorry, and finally. We will talk uh, about some tips and tricks for optimizing rule performance. Yes. So first of all, uh, we will talk about a few items related to strategies to create robust rules. And obviously it's really important to fo focus on uh, specific patterns and not uh, random ones. Yes, because uh, sometimes uh, we are seeing that the patterns that you guys are sharing uh, are maybe related to uh, campaigns that last very a very short period of time. And I think that rules uh, needs to be uh, like strong, strong ones and take a, a really long time uh, of usefulness. Yes, so this is a key point. And then uh, obviously avoid random file names as uh, uh, executables or even file event rules that has uh, names that looks really, really random. These are not useful. Um, and other uh, key point, it's use, uh, use, you can use Google, yeah, Google it. You can uh, take this piece of maybe, for instance, if you guys want to create a file event rule, uh, you can uh, pick this uh, specific file name and uh, Google it. You can uh, just move to Google, use the search bar and look if uh, this specific file name 
uh, it's related to a specific campaign or maybe uh, it's related also to a valid tool name or specific uh, file name uh, that will cause false positives, for instance. So Google, it's a really useful tool in this case, and it's a simple one uh, to use. Then it's uh, important to check for duplicated uh, and on TDM, yes, and, for, and using Warden when you are uh, creating content on, on your platform, uh, you need to, to check these uh, specific alerts from Warden. Yes, it's really important. And then, obviously, this uh, last key point, it's not related to the rules logic, but it's more related to the, the action of create good titles and descriptions. Yes, uh, this is uh, more important even than the the logic in some uh, rules because here you can explain and describe what the rules wants to detect and want what the rules uh wants to 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 offer yeah to us to and to the clients as well so <clears throat> it's a really key point yes uh and maybe it's uh at the same level of uh importance of uh of the rules uh, detection itself Yes. So let's move to the next slide. Just one moment. So here is uh, an example of uh, the action of focusing on specific patterns and all the the actions that uh, we will uh, we will seen in this uh, previous slide, yes. In this case, we have uh, an example of a good pattern, as you can see here. We have uh, an action that turn off creation of system restore checkpoints. So uh, this is a really good pattern that we can use for create a, a Sigma rule. Yes, we can create a registry event rule in this case using the registry path, the details here, the value name, and you can see here the enable value and disable value. So if you if we use this specific uh, data and we create a good title and description, we can use this specific information to create uh, the title and description. Uh, we surely have a, a role that will be accepted and uploaded to TDM. And obviously it will be really useful for clients, yes. <clears throat> And then we have a, a not a good one. Yes, uh, sorry. This is uh, the other example. And why this is not a, a good a good one, a good rule. Yes. Uh, and mostly this is because, as you can see here, we have uh, an action that says when the user runs the advanced IP scanner dot exe, it uses DLL side loading to load the malicious eViewers DLL file and initiate the infection sequence. In this case, maybe an adversary could change this specific advanced IP scanner name for any other one. And also, they can change the iViewers DLL name. Yes, so the rule will be will not be useful for a long period of time. Yes, but this one, yes, it will be really useful for a long period of time because it's related to a registry path that it's... Uh, related to the uh, system restore checkpoints on Windows systems, yes. This is the main difference. So let's move to the next slide. And obviously, as we have uh, discussed before, we need to avoid random file names, yes. Um, in this case, uh, I share uh, some examples here, but as you can see here, the ter DLL or load DLL, these are not uh, file names that show us uh, a specific uh, campaign pattern, but it's uh, these are random names that will be changed anytime. Yes, 
maybe you guys create a rule using these specific names and maybe the next day threat actors use another name maybe lo load one dot exe and then and the next day load three dot exe and the next day load 15 dot exe etc yes same here maybe ter dll and maybe then i don't know abc dll and then another kind of name so that's why uh that's what i want to explain when i talk about random names yes And this is the, the topic related to Google. Yes, as you can see here, I just use a, a specific file name that I that I uh, investigated from this campaign, from this specific campaign. And if we take, uh, if we use Google to look for this specific core reborn thirty two that bin, we will see that. Uh, we just received uh, a few results. So in this case, this is a really good IOC, a really good uh, file name, for instance, to use for in order to create a rule. Yes, so you can uh, check this by in, in your uh, computers. You can go and look for this called reward32.bin and you will see that you will uh, receive a few results or maybe uh, one just uh, just one result yes so that's the rule that we are uh, surely accepting and using uh, as a good uh, iocs and campaign rules yes so uh you, uh, you guys need to use google always and look at uh, this specific button so as i told you before I can look for this specific file. So I will receive a few results, a lot of results. So um, then I need to analyze these results and maybe if all of them or most or a big number of them are related to the campaign or malicious um, or maybe articles that says that this uh, specific file, uh, it's related to campaigns, uh, malicious campaigns, we can use it to create a rule, but maybe if we receive a lot of results and random ones, maybe, I don't know, for forums or, I don't know, um, related to uh, some type of uh, information that could lead us to false positive detections, uh, we need to, to not use this specific file, yes? So this is uh, how Google can help us to create a good content uh, easily, yes? And obviously, we need to uh, check for duplicates, yes. Uh, in this case, we can use Warden to check uh, if this content that we are, uh, we can create, we want to create, uh, it's already created on TDM, or maybe we can go to TDM and look for this specific uh, content using, for instance, Lucene queries or looking directly on the search bar from the platform, yes. <clears throat> Obviously, this uh, takes more time than just uh, going to the portal and start to create uh, the code for the rule, but will uh, it will be, um, it will be more useful than just sending the rule without this, uh, these checks and then, uh, receiving the message that uh, the rule was uh, declining. Yes, so these are important uh, checks that we need to do in order to be sure that uh, the content will be accepted. Yes. And obviously, this is uh, another key point related to the creation of good titles and descriptions, yes. And in this case, um, it's important to take care uh, to check the spelling and grammar. 
and create titles and descriptions that are robust and specifically explains what the rules want to detect. Yes, this is uh, really important because if not, maybe we can create a really good rule, a really interesting content, but maybe the title and descriptions are too long. Yes, or maybe it has grammar issues. Yes, or some kind of mistakes. And this, this obviously will uh, result in a rejection from your site. Um, and this is, a, so this is a, a really key point and it's uh, as important, it's really important. It's uh, at the same level of the, of the detection logic of the rule, yes. So these are the common pitfalls and how to avoid them, yes. In this case, I will explain a bit uh, these slides and then I will show you guys uh, some practical examples quickly to show you guys the difference uh, that uh, between a, a good investigation and an investigation that maybe will lead us to a rejection of uh, your content, yes. In this case, uh, the key points, as you can see here, are related to create resilient content, avoid random names. Again, this, this is really important, guys. Always look for, always try to avoid random names and random task names, for instance. Uh, we are seeing that you guys create uh, tons of rules related to task creations, but obviously, uh, these are not agnostic ones. Maybe uh, you need to create more agnostic content and just uh, looking for specific task names that are related to a campaign. Yes, maybe Google, using Google, for instance, uh, and not uh, using random names. Yes, in this case. Well, paying attention to grammar and spelling, avoid the duplicated uh, content. And obviously, constantly looking for new reference uh, reference sources and quality over quantity. Yes, it's better to send maybe two or three rules that uh, has a really interesting content than sending twenty rules that maybe uh, maybe I don't know ten or eleven of them will be rejected for all of these uh, points that we have discussed uh, in this webinar. Yes. So in this case, uh, in order to create uh, a good Sigma rules, yes, and a good detection content, it's important to take care of a basic life cycle for these kind of detections, yes. The most important thing is search for Intel. In this case, we can use free resources that we will uh, check now, just in a few minutes. Uh, these are, as uh, as you can see, free resources that shares good intel, and we can use them to create good content. Then um, extract those IOCs or use those TTPs that we have found there, and find what we uh, think it's relevant and could lead us to detection patterns. The next step it's uh, related to create the sigmas or a sigma rule, maybe. We can uh, extract information to create, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five Sigma rules. Just remember quality over quantity. And then uh, see the results. Yes, we can see if we are under attack, we can test these rules in your environment and look, uh, for instance, if uh, the rule will be reused maybe for similar behaviors. Yes, it's really important to test the content and use references that uh, valid uh, the rule that we have uh, created, yes. And obviously, if we create a good uh, Sigma rule, we will be here in the leaderboards, obviously, uh, in the top places, yes, as you can see here. Uh, it's uh, I think it's really important to 
to stay in this uh, top outdoor statics because uh, maybe this could uh, help us to find uh, good jobs or maybe making us uh, famous on social networks, for instance. And obviously, uh, the the money the the money that we can gain doing this uh, kind of good work, right? So. Here we will see a key point between IOC rules and threat hunting Sigma rules, yes. In this case, uh, the IOC Sigma rules are, uh, as you can see here, designed to detect known uh, bad entities such as specific malware signatures, IP address, URLs, or hash values that uh, has been previously identified and related uh, in specific campaigns, yes. This kind of rules maybe are uh, less agnostic in this case, but are useful for uh, for detecting uh, campaigns uh, easily and faster than the threat, uh, threat hunting aspects. Yes, obviously the IOC rules uh, needs to be shorter, maybe with fine names or I don't know, as you can see here, URLs or hashes or this kind of values that are more. Uh, that has more visibility than the threat hunting uh, content, yes. As you can see here in contrast, uh, threat hunting Sigma rules are more uh, about proactive exploration and obviously needs correlation, yes. Maybe we need more than one rule to check this kind of parameters in a specific environment, yes. Uh, but this one are uh, designed to detect behaviors or patterns that may indicate compromise or an attempt to break a system. Yes, they are. Uh, they attempt to look more deeper than the IOC rules. Yes, and that's uh, the main difference of this of this content, right? So, in this case, we will see some uh, examples. Yes, uh, we have. I think 10 more minutes to check. So let me share with you guys uh, some examples of uh, resources and uh, some examples to show you guys how we want to uh, you guys use the, all these intelligence that you can find on the internet. Yes, just give me one second. As as I told you guys before, this is uh, any run. Maybe you are you guys are familiar with this uh, with this site. Yes, it's a really good one. You just need to do a short registration, and you can start to use the platform. Obviously, there is tons of rules as you can see here. This big number, um, and obviously. This page has filters. These filters help us to look for specific kind of uh, files that we are looking for. For instance, Microsoft Office, PDF, image, MSI, email files, scripts, etc. Yes, we can look for hashes. We can look for the verdict of file, malicious, suspicious, or no threats detected. Sometimes, here are good stuff to check. So just in case, it's a good place to, to look for. And then obviously we can look for IP addresses, meet your attack techniques. We can look for date and we will receive a lot of results. And obviously we can pick one of them and look for the behavior and look for and look if uh, this information is uh, useful or not uh, for creating a, a sigma rule. Yes, well, maybe then you guys can dip and, and uh, on this on all this uh, information that the platform shares and look for detections here. But any run, it's a really good place to look for. Uh, specific behavior and we can see how the the malware uh, works here in this uh, little 
sandbox. Yes. So this is one of the uh, resources that I want to share with you guys. And the other one, it's uh, this one. This is uh, maybe, <laughs> this is not uh, uh, well known that, uh, than any run. It, this is Malpedia library. It's uh, a library, obviously, which uh, with a lot of articles related to specific threads. Yes, you can see here, there is a lot of articles and information that we can use for detection purposes and obviously to create Sigma rules as well, yes. Mostly all of the articles are uh, in English, but maybe you can find, I don't know, um, Japanese, German, Chinese, but most mostly all of them are uh, in English. So it will be easy to, to use all of them, yes. And then I just want to show you guys a little example here of uh, good detections and maybe uh, how we can uh, differentiate the content that maybe could lead us to false positives and how we can use uh, content that maybe will be useful to create a, a good Sigma rule and maybe uh, a, specific, a specific situation that I am seeing a lot of times when we receive uh, rules that it's important to clarify as well. So here's uh, an article. This one is related to an ABT group analysis. Yes. So obviously we need to read all the information and look for specific patterns that could lead us to maybe a sigma rule of uh, or maybe uh, uh, some kind of detection patterns for uh, our uh, environment. Yes, in this case, we are seeing here a random file name. So if we use this information to create a sigma rule, obviously, it will be rejected, yes, because this looks really random. As you can see here, this is not a specific name that could be useful, yes. Or maybe if we look, or maybe if we want to use this specific pattern, as you can see here, we will receive as well a reject message from us because this behavior, it's pretty much covered on TDM, we can check it easily. We can go to TDM and use the scene query. And look for this specific value, just using double quotes and the Lucene value. And we will receive a lot of content, two pages of rules that has this specific value, right? So this is what we have uh, discussed, discussed previously. Yes, the random names duplicated. So this information will not be useful if you want to create a, a new Sigma rule, right? So we can move uh, quickly to the next uh, example. Here is uh, a really interesting case. Sometimes we are uh, seeing that you guys sent maybe this kind of uh, this kind of executions, yes. But maybe you guys need to check that in this case, this is not uh, related to specific malicious behavior, but as the title says, how to check if your system is affected. Yes, so maybe it's important, maybe uh, it's important to look for all 
the article and read all the information carefully and not just trying to look for, oh, here is a pattern. I will create a sigma rule with this. No, it's important to look, read, and analyze the information that we want to use this. Yes, because as you can see here, this information is not related to malicious behavior, but for checking if we are victim or, or not of this uh, CV exploitation attempt, right? So it's important to read all the article and, and stay focused on the information, right? And the last example, and we can finish <coughs> with this uh, with this webinar, is uh, another article that has probably good information to create a sigma rule. Yes, in this case, it's an article related to dark bit C2, the latest muddy water attack framework. It's a long one. A lot of information is uh, available here. But if we look here at the end, we are seeing a PowerShell code that it's been executed. And we are seeing here maybe good information to create a good Sigma rule. Yeah. So you can see here this. For instance, this is in it.log. If you Google it, you probably will receive a few results. And this, uh, it's really, it's a really good pattern to create uh, a Sigma root, as you can see here. Yes, this code, it reads the content of the file, name it. And you can see here, this is in it.log and sends it, sends it to the C2 via post request. So you can see here, Again, this is init log file. So this probably will be a good place to create at least one Sigma rule. Yes. So uh, that's, that's all for today. Surely we will have more webinars in in maybe in one month and then we will create more and more, but it's, uh, I think it's important to create short ones to not uh, talk about a lot of, of information and just focusing on of, on key points, right? So I think that that's all for today. So thank you guys for for showing us in this uh, in this webinar, and I hope you start to send uh, more Sigma rules, and obviously we will accept it and uh, accept a lot of content if we uh, use these key points that we have shared today. Thanks.